Hey, welcome everybody to uh, this week's Voice of College Football After Dark. It's a, a platform for all of us Patreon members to get a chance to talk about our teams and college football in general. We uh, love having all of you guys out there. And it's an easy way to become part of us. All you have to do is join the Patreon. Uh, $5 a month, the best deal you're around. I don't think anyone that's joined has actually left. We have live uh, game feeds every Saturday. And the constant chalk in Discord is worth the $5 alone. Uh, this week, we have only us. If you notice, the parents are missing. We don't have Ben. We don't have John. So when the parents are away, the kids can play. So we got control of the house. Yes, We're going to have a lot of fun. We hope that you guys can engage us. Please um, feel free to drop super chats. That's the quickest way to get our attention. Believe me, the money helps the Voice of College Football community, and we're always looking for a little money for Mark. So you want to make sure you get right to the top of the line for questions. Please feel free to drop that super chat. So uh, with that, I want to introduce everyone to Tony Altimore, the greatest Trojan of them all, the most noble Trojan of them all, or is that some other guy? I can't remember. It's probably got, some other guy. Jordan Bowman with Clemson. We got Jackson, who's an Alabama fan. What's we, got up, D4. We, got, we got Brandon, D4, a big UT guy. And then we have Will, Will ND, who has his own uh, Notre Dame channel. Mm -hmm. So guys, um, we're going to start with one topic. The topic is Don set up for us. Dad set up for us was on the razor's edge. So a lot of the top teams barely scraped by this week. Uh, you had Georgia, Ohio State, Michigan, TCU, and USC with some close shaves. What do you guys think about those games and anything in particular stick out to you? I think one of the, I think one of the most interesting things to come out of that was a quote from Brett Bielema. Uh, stating, I've lost all respect for this. Abs this is absolutely rigged for money or ratings. I won't be silent. i just seen it live. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree. Was that you a real from, quote? It's, it's on Twitter. So. <laughs> well, I, I mean, let's say Yeah, it was on Twitter, agree? so it, it had to have been real. I, I, well, I like that was comment it? because it's kind of weird how they went from having a, a polls where you have, like, lots of people granted – how qualified are they to make those votes down to a small select committee? And we all know the smaller you shrink something, the more control you can have over it. And so it's kind of weird. That seems like, you know, and I, I, I've always said this for a while. I, I, I'm not much of a conspiracy guy, but it wouldn't be too difficult for Fox and ESPN to get in the ears of committee members saying who they want to see um, place. I'm assuming that's where BNN is, is getting at. What do you think? Uh, it's 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 hard to say. I mean, whatever. I mean, everything you just said could put a pop could, could possibly uh, be happening uh, as well. Uh, but uh, I, I don't know if he's referring to on the field issues or uh, what you just said. So, well, it could be either. What, what what do you what did you take from his comments? I th I, th I thought it was he was referring to like like pass interference penalty that put Michigan in business. Mm -hmm. Well, that that call there was also a holding. There was also a holding call that was holding, but it was a very interesting time, right? I yeah. think they they, they it would have been like a fourth and one. Instead, they're looking at third and seventeen, right? So, I mean, uh, that 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 holding penalty, which you know, letter of the law, that was a holding penalty, but that was a pretty massive call at that point in the game. Mm -hmm. I agree, hundred percent. But as far as the games go, uh, it just shows you like everything that's happened throughout this season. You know, Michigan in close game, uh, Ohio State coming down to the wire, USC and US, UCLA having, you know, one of their games for the ages for both programs. Uh, you know, Georgia struggled at times this year. They struggled against Kentucky, only winning 16-6. to six. I just think it showed you there's more parity in college football this year than there has been in the in the most recent years. And this makes the a lot more fun, man. Like, if none of these teams – if there's no one elite team – if we don't know who's going to win, it makes it a lot more fun for everyone to watch. Yeah. I mean, those games from Michigan and TC, I tell you what, that's the stuff that champions are made of. I do yeah, hope I that uh, Black Corum is doing okay. Yeah, absolutely. That was a uh, – yeah, that was a really scary injury, seeing him go out like that. Um but yeah, to you guys' point, yeah, th this has been a, just a wild college football season in general, and uh, just seeing all all the top four teams, you just kind of you know skate by. Um, you know, it it just tells you everything you need to know about 
you know, there's not really, I think a lot of times we, especially in, in the college football playoff era, we keep like searching and, and, and trying to find like those two or three, maybe four elite teams in college football that are just like, just bulldozing everybody. And uh, just, they look unbeatable and, and, we, and we think that's normal. And that's what um, the co what college football is, you know, normally looks like. And uh, that's just not the case this year. And I think it's, Kind of the the run the run that Alabama has been on and um and, and just the 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 dominance that they've shown uh, I think it's kind of uh, skewed our perception of what college football is normally and uh, we, we've kind of raised our our standards for what makes an an elite team and I quotation marks elite uh, so it, it's uh it, I think we're kind of getting more of a regression to the means sort of. In recent and, years. I think you're right, Jordan. I mean, teams used to play win the national championship with one and sometimes even two losses. And so, you know, the 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 idea that you know if you lose a game, you are no longer relevant in anything is is a very new creation. And I think it's kind of better that we're going back to the the way that it used to be with a little bit of a little bit of wildness. We say we've seen anybody can beat anybody. None of these teams are invincible. And that's that's what popped and, off the page to me. Oh, sorry, Tony. No, I, I was saying, and that's what popped off the page to me is when I'm looking at, you know, a seven to four Illini team, you know, a six to five Maryland team, a six to five Baylor team. I don't know what UK's um, record is, but the teams that the, the a lot of teams were alluding to were, were you know, not very good teams. And and when you're talking about great teams, we know that you have there's always that bad game, right? You have in your back pocket. But, you know, Georgia's already had a couple bad games, you know what I mean, where they squeaked out wins. And this is this is the, a third one. So, we just, I mean, I would came into the season thinking that Georgia was – was nobody was going to touch them, right? But they're playing in some pretty tight games against some pretty suspect competition. But the, the only team and that I'm going to throw at is, yeah, USC had a nail-biter with UCLA, but UCLA was, you know, a pretty damn good, right? They were they were 9-2? No, no, 8-2, eight, eight, eight 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 right? 8-2 and two with um, losses to Oregon – uh, and th well, when they did lose, they lost close games to good teams. I think they lost by 14 to um, Oregon. But Arizona that, wasn't a good loss. But was yeah. that? I said Arizona wasn't a good loss. But other than yeah, that's, that, that's yeah. not a good loss. That's a good point. Um, but the but there but I wouldn't put UCLA in the category of of Illinois, Maryland, uh, and Baylor. I I just wouldn't unless you guys want to counter that with me. They just don't no. seem like very good teams, you know. So. Um, it, it is interesting that that uh, these teams struggled again, showing they're fallible. And I think maybe this year it might be saying maybe this year we don't have it where one team just runs away with it and destroys everyone, right? Because usually that's been the case in a lot of these playoffs is one team just smacks everybody. And it might be interesting. We might have some upsets this year. I think two things happened Saturday with USC. They or three things. They beat their in-state rival. They it's ever so closer to the playoff picture and Caleb Williams cemented himself as the number one Heisman contender. And they locked up the, the um, a ch a ride to the conference championship game, right? Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. only question is who are they going to play Oregon or Washington? Well, a lot of people think that Oregon state, a lot of people think Oregon state's going to give Oregon a pretty tough game um, in, in the civil war. Yeah, and I mean, I'll tell you as a Trojan fan, I know going to Research Stadium in any year was is horrible. But what what Jonathan Smith has going there um, in Corvallis is something special. And again, they were a quarterback away from being a a true Pac-12 contender this year. So um, I don't think that the that the Ducks are going to walk in there and and win that game easily. It's going to be a nail biter. And I I would honestly say I'd probably lean towards uh, Oregon State winning that game, uh, given. Yeah. I mean, Bo Nix did look okay. You know, he looked like he wasn't too troubled by by that injury. But um, I know the Ducks are kind of dinged up. So it, it'll be interesting to see what happens. Again, the one thing that gives me question and pause is Oregon State doesn't have a quarterback. It's hard to win the, in any league without a quarterback, especially against a good team like Oregon. No, and Gal Branson's been doing a phenomenal job. I mean, for a kid who's not on the level of the other Pac-12 quarterbacks, he's beating – He's beating teams that he is not on the level of quarterback wise, and they're and leaning kudos, on that running game. Kudos, kudos to the the Beavs for that. 
And, and that's it. Like, they're they're leading a veteran out. offensive line. They got a veteran offensive line. Martinez is, you know, Martinez is a great back. He's probably the best back most people haven't heard of. And um, their their offensive line play with the Johnson Smith, Jonathan Smith offense has kept them in games. I'm just saying, man, I'm kind of glad. I'm I'm really glad that um, JT Daniels did not. <laughs> I'm glad he went to, away from Oregon State and over to uh, West Virginia instead of joining them because that would have been a tough team to beat. Anyone, any, any more thoughts on uh, the close games of the week? We haven't really hit on Ohio State, uh, Maryland. You guys want – well, we got the uh, – any, anything about the Buckeyes or the, uh, the Michigan struggles? Oh, they were both looking ahead to one another, no doubt. You know, we, think, we think that's what the – does or – I mean, I mean, because I uh, – I just – it's possible, but, you, you know, just watching those games, I, I don't know if they were particularly, like it, – it didn't it didn't seem like they were, like, not engaged or, or like, you know, lackadaisical. I, I just – I felt like both teams were, were – they just were in dogfights and they uh, they played two teams that had prepared well for them. Um, and they found and – and the big thing, too, is they found a way to win. Lincoln Riley yep. says it, and I, I agree with him. He says, winning is hard. And winning on the is. road is hard. And I mean, they went down, and Maryland was feisty. Maryland's a decent team, and, it and Maryland me, played well. It, it reminded me of that twenty eighteen team game a bit in the Buckeye, which the Buckeyes pulled out. But the Michigan Illinois game reminded me of the Michigan Iowa game in twenty sixteen, which they didn't pull out. So definitely a big step forward that Jim Harbaugh and his program are able to win that game, a game which they didn't win in twenty sixteen. They might have won the CJ short game. They might have had that game won if it wasn't pre- before that game because one loss could turn into two losses quick. So that was definitely and, huge for both of the teams coming into the game to get wins, to keep that confidence up. Well, yeah, and losing that- Corum in that game was big too. You know, i got to remember that. And they came back. They, they had a rough third quarter, but they did come back from behind, you know, to, to win that game. So that, like you said, that that is a testament to things changing and that they may not have done in the past. Okay, well, if you guys are done with that, we can move on to John's next topic. So the next topic is um, Tennessee. What the hell happened? Right? They get whacked by South Carolina. Uh, Shane Beamer. This is a great. This is a great thing that he came up with. Um, John brought this stat. He said, "Comes the first coach since the '70s to win two games in one year." By 20 points in games, they were 20 point underdogs. Yeah, so here's the thing. It's interesting. I'm cutting that off because we are not doing the SEC auto fellatio about South Carolina now. South Carolina is a bad team that exposed a very, very suspect defense at Tennessee. And then, very sadly, Hennon Hooker hurt his, hurt his ankle or his knee and is out for the season. But yeah, I, 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 will, not stu- I will not stomach. The what I've already started to hear from people, the like, oh, maybe South Carolina should be ranked nonsense. Oh, no, that's garbage. Yeah, well, yeah that's absolute like, garbage. I mean, like, kudos like, to Shane Beamer, kudos to Shane Beamer for turning that program around. But it's like, it's like, the thing about they're not is, a, Georgia gave the blueprint to how to slow down the Tennessee offense. Some people can call it a gimmick offense, you know, whatever you want to say about it. Uh, but they show the blueprint, uh, keep everything in front of you, make them take the, you know, seven, eight yard hitch routes, you know, uh, the uh, screens and stuff like that. But the defense was absolutely God awful. They made Spencer Rattler look like a Heisman contender when he's had eight, he had eight uh, passing touchdowns all year and had six in that game alone. I mean, that that goes to show everything you need to know about the Tennessee defense, and that is the largest. Uh, no, it's the most points scored ever for a non-ranked opponent against a top an AP top five uh, team in history. That's big. And we knew Tennessee was really bad on defense. That's the one thing that's kind of bugged me this whole time. We knew they were a bad defense, but yet there's an excuse. I guess because it's the SEC, if you have a tragic defense, you can be you know, high in the rankings, whereas you had other programs from other uh, conferences. So they put, well, look at the defense. The defense sucks. Well, I got news for everyone. You're right. There's a lot of bad defenses on our teams, but there's some also outstanding offenses. 
what was the difference between and then you get the point they say well you know do they have top two top 10 wins and then the question is are you calling lsu a top 10 because that's questionable as well so it just it just feeds on itself do you know what i mean this whole narrative that i'm not i'm i know that alabama's good you know i know that lsu is good but are they top 10 teams or are we saying they're top 10 teams because they're in the sec so or, we're still, or because they beat Bama as well, you know. Well, yeah, it's just it's, it's just kind of this, this 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 inbred thing where it's like, well, we beat our team, this team. Well, we're the best conference. So if you beat someone in our conference, then you're the best team. It's just this little round circle thing that we're dealing with. And of all years this year, that might have some leaks to it. That's all I'm going to say. I'm not saying that the SEC is not the best conference. It probably still is the best conference. I'm not going there. But I don't want to hear, good. well, they had the two best top ten wins. Because we don't know. I mean, I'm still questioning. I don't think LSU is a top 10 team. I just don't think they are. I don't either. And I agree you know? with the super chat. Uh, yeah, DeAndre, I totally agree with you. And thank you, DeAndre, for the super chat. Why is LSU ranked and Alabama ranked ahead of Clemson? I don't know because Clemson is much more deserving, especially than LSU. Yeah, Clemson beat out FSU, who beat out. That's, there's no better case right now for LSU. I mean, LSU is good. They should be. 10, 12, 15, whatever, but they're not, they shouldn't be seven. And, and I will say this. I mean, Alabama does have a great point. I mean, Alabama's two losses were by three or four points on the road, you know, so I, I, I'm giving them a pass. But anybody who's in the top 10, if you got, if you got smacked by more than 21 points, do you, re- do you really think you belong in the top 10? I mean, I don't know. It makes, it makes me question um, systems, let's put it that way. Yeah. Well, and we're and we're not we're not talking about who the more talented team is because if you if you go by talent wise, Alabama's a more talented team than Tennessee, and they lost. You know, right. you can't go by comparisons of that. You have to go be like, who's deserving? Is TCU in the same realm of talent that Georgia, Ohio State, or Michigan is at right now? No, but they're in the top four. You know why? Because they're undefeated and they deserve to be there. And, yeah, and Mark, other- I, I, I didn't say that. I said Alabama, I think, is a top 10 team. LSU, yeah. I do not think, is a top 10 team. I, I agree with you, Tim. I mean, Al- Alabama, I remember, Alabama is two plays away from being undefeated, and they're four plays away from four losses. Yeah. So, and they've just, they've had one of those fluky seasons, and those fluky seasons happen sometimes. So, yeah, should LSU, should, do we hail the glory of Alabama? No. Do we say they're garbage? No, but they're, they're a really, really, really good team. Yeah. But they, they didn't win. And one of the things is great teams find ways to win games. Look at this weekend. Look at these close teams. Look at what TCU did. TCU should have lost, what, like five games this year? And TCU finds a way to win. And we don't ex- – just if we get just as we give teams credit for winning those games, we don't – we can't pretend they didn't win. I mean, we talk a lot about weird mitigating circumstances with USC's loss. Well, they still lost it. They didn't win. They still yeah. lost it, but yeah, they, they lost to a very good team uh, yeah. by how many points? Did they lose one. by 24, 25 points? What did they lose to? They lost by one point. Did they lose to a really crappy team? No. No, no, they did not. So that that's the point I'm making. If you lose to bad teams or if you get blown out in games, I think those wipe out. You know, we, you, When you're looking at a resume, right, are you going to hire the guy? Hey, he went to Stanford, you know, and, it, and he, then he went to – Not uh, in Pittsburgh football. Well, I'm saying, I'm saying, if, if you're hiring somebody, and the guy went to Stanford, and then and then he went and he went to Princeton, right? And then and then all of a sudden he worked at these great firms. Oh, but he shot his wife in the face. <laughs> you know what I mean? Are you gonna hire that guy? So yes, he's got some wins on his, but he's got a big L, doesn't he? He's got a really big L. Do we overlook the big L? I don't think we would. So this idea about resumes and well, they got these two, they got this win. Yeah, they do, but they also got a really ugly loss, and that has to count for something as well. And real quick, DeAndre, thank you again for your other comment. Michigan has issues a QB in a weak schedule. Yeah, Michigan has a really weak schedule. And I I am I and I love Michigan. Go blue, hail the victors, love yeah. Coach Carr, friend of our families. But like, yeah, they got a really weak schedule. And I, I don't mind that that the committee has recognized that. Yeah, that non conference schedule consists of Colorado State, Connecticut, and Hawaii. Now when well, okay, you, get, you keep get, Jim Morris Huskies out of your mouth, sir. They are bowl eligible. <laughs> they are doing big things. That is, I'm not convinced Jim Morris Huskies aren't better than LSU. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, but they have that. But what he's done there at UConn is just insane. The turnaround that they have there. No, I know you're but I'm, I'm saying in general, 
the job that Jim Mora has done is is Miraculous. absolutely amazing. Yeah. And believe me, Miraculous. I'm not a huge Jim Mora fan. Let me put it that way. So, uh, he, but what he has done is undeniable. I mean, you have to look at it and say, "Wow, that's hats off to you." It's miraculous, and and, and the, the ferociousness. I mean, this is where you see like the homerism is the ferocious of the Tennessee is a top ten team. All everyone's all screaming in their keyboards, like guys. Maybe you, you, a top ten team does not get whacked like that by South Carolina. Nope. Let's let's be real. Oh, they had a bad game. Having a bad game is struggling against a bad team, right? That's having a bad game. Right? What happened to Georgia water. and to OSU and to and to uh, and to TCU and to Kentucky. Well, that's, to, what, to be fair to Georgia, to, that, that's having a bad day. Getting smacked by Spencer Rattler, that's not having a bad day. That's tragic. Allowing that's, 63 okay. points by a it's, crack it's, it's actually it's worse than tragic. It's just cringe. So all this Tennessee that you're like I'm reading in the chat, I'm just laughing because it is it it is cringe. Like Tennessee. Well, okay, so I'm, I'm going to shoot my own team in the foot right right here. Uh, so. It, just to play devil's advocate, if 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 you say a top ten team shouldn't get smacked like th- that, then how can you justify Clemson being in the top ten? Because Clemson didn't give up sixty two points to Spencer Rattler. You're yes. right. You're yes. right. But they got they got sma- no, Notre Dame smacked them. I mean, it wasn't. Yeah, it wasn't. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Then if Notre Dame, if Notre, if Clemson got smacked, let's put it on the scale of smacked. Like Notre Dame took a or Clemson took a couple big punches to the face, maybe a broken nose, and like. South Carolina, and they put they put them in the wood chipper. Okay, or let's go one step further. What happened to – I remember the beginning of the year, everyone wrote off the Ducks. Everyone wrote the Ducks because they got smacked, right? By who? By South Carolina? No, not by South Carolina. By the defending national champions in the very first game of the year in a de facto home game. I'm okay? And then everyone said, with that loss, there's no way they belong anywhere in the argument. Am I wrong? Am I making that up? No, I'm not. So then they fell out of the rankings them. with that loss. They dropped Oregon out of the rankings with that loss of the national champions. And Tennessee went down what four? Yeah, it was pathetic. It's just it's just absolutely absurd. So you can't do it both ways, right? I agree. I don't think you know a loss like that from Oregon it does set them in a whole different category, regardless if it's the first game of the year or not, right? There's a lot of reasons why Oregon got smacked. They probably wouldn't get hit that hard right now in Week 12, but this is yeah. Week 12. And that South Carolina team is horrible. So anyone that sits there and wants to talk about maybe they're a team that has a good offense and absolutely zero defense because no one should be giving up 63 points to South Carolina. No one's even come Nobody. close to that. Vanderbilt shouldn't do that. Teams even can't do that. Vanderbilt doesn't do that. Oh, hold on. Uh, I think – hold on. I think – Dereal Dereal has, Dereal has two influenced two the master. I can always, I can always summon Mark. <laughs> I've got the gift. Hello, Hello Mark. Mark. How are you? I was doing better 10 minutes ago before I turned the show on. Is <laughs> <laughs> real influence him into, into Cohen? People are going to start asking me, who in the world are you letting comment on your channel? That's right. It's gracious. Right. Uh, I want to ask Jordan this question. When you compare how badly Tennessee lost last night to how badly Clemson lost to Notre Dame, Regardless of score, because scores are one thing. Uh, I think we all have watched enough football to know there there are scores, and then there is watching the football game and understanding how long a team that eventually was blown out by 25 points got to the point where they were blown out by that type of score. So at some point in the third quarter, both Clemson and Tennessee were blown out by South Carolina and by Notre Dame. So it wasn't just because it was 63-38 or whatever the final score was. It doesn't mean it was any worse than 35-14. That 35-14 game was a 28 to nothing game. That 63-38 game was a 35-24 game that was later an 11-point game that was still competitive deep into the third quarter. Was it that competitive, do you think? No, Clemson. I I don't. I I would say that Tennessee was more competitive with South Carolina than Clemson was against Notre Dame. But it was Which, at least, it was it was comparable. What? Okay. Is so there like a magnitude was, though the to like mark? the nuclear radiation left by that game though? That's the thing. Like I like I, I thought that Clemson was pretty well dominated by Notre Dame, and Will was there. I'll defer to him as the master. 
but yeah. it just if, if this this game felt like just a much much uglier uglier loss. It it it's also it's and also Notre Dame so much later. And I also disagree that just because a team gets blown out one game out of twelve eliminates them from the top ten in the nation. We would have to go through every top ten from the beginning of college football history and rewrite and chuck teams that were really good. Uh, Deion Sanders, Florida State team, lost to Miami, 31 nothing. the first game of the season. They were a great team. They finished in the top three in the country. Oh, chuck them. They got blown out. <laughs> we were, I, could, I could give you 100 examples. But did they get blown out by a pretty lousy really South Carolina team? Top 10 teams that got blown out at some point in the season. That it should they should be penalized. Of course, they need to be penalized for it. And and also dropping teams, it all depends on what everybody else is doing. It's not in a vacuum. Yeah. Well, that's what I was looking at, Mark. I'm looking at didn't they lose to Florida like the week before 38 to 6? They did. Well, I mean, yeah. South Carolina is a like really play, bad. You're, you're starting to use the transitive property. Right. Aren't you? Yeah. South, well, South Carolina. I mean, South Carolina is exactly a pretty bad team. As you told me. That's how we do all of this. I didn't think you agreed with that. Well, I, I went in Rome. The property. Went, what I'm saying Rome. is basically, let's say Tennessee was a legit number five team before the South Carolina game. If we're just going to take that game in a vacuum, I would say absolutely penalize them, drop them considerably. But it obviously depends on what everybody else is doing too. It's, you know, there, there has to be some consideration to, if Alabama and Tennessee or Al I'm sorry, Alabama and LSU are fairly highly ranked teams that deserve some level of ranking, whether you think that's six and seven or whether you think that's 11 and 12, the justification then would have to be that Tennessee has to continue to be ranked ahead of them. Correct. Well, I, I worry I, you about know, Mark, I'll be honest. After earlier, getting Mark, I'm worried about the fact that you have a situation where we're saying a team in the SEC is good because they beat a team in the SEC. And where I really get worried is, is we're making LSU and, you know, this linchpin that's this great team with two losses, right, who also has had some embarrassing losses, right? And we're saying, oh, well, look at these teams. And then we're putting them above everyone else. So if everyone has a loss, well, I agree the SEC is the best conference. But we're, we're, we're saying these two teams are good because we say these two teams are good. Well, that's we what I'm saying. Well, okay, we'll take your team, USC. And mm -hmm. I've got all the respect for USC. I've got them very highly ranked. However, they haven't beaten anyone outside the conference yet. Therefore, we have to evaluate their wins based on how uh, on just winning games in the conference too. So uh, we wins have and the losses. same thing in every conference. We have to do the same thing in the Pac-12. We have to say, well, UCLA must be good because they beat Utah. Well, Utah we, beat we, USC. Mark. They must be good. And you know, we 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 can run around that. Mark, let me ask you this question. Situation in the Pac-12. Let me ask you this question: If USC had lost to Utah, yes. By 25 points, would you have them in the top 10? Uh, no, because they haven't beaten Alabama and LSU and other teams of that caliber. If we USC lost to Arizona Michigan. by 25 points and lost a, and, and as was also slaughtered by – if you were by Utah and slaughtered by Arizona, you wouldn't have them up there. I mean, the thing is, is guys – and, and Todd, Todd, no, no offense. I, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm not – it's not Gamecock hate. It's just they are not a strong team this year. They're they're oh they're good they're okay team but they're not they're not a they're not a particularly strong team and using them to prop up Tennessee is we're, we're going to find more about them next week when they play Clemson and if they show up and play a bowl game uh, with with you know out having too many opt outs but uh, that we can legitimize that result. And Todd, we're not taking a. We're not taking away from the win. I don't think anyone on this panel is saying we're that is a, a freaking amazing. The win's awesome. Win. And and the I'm not awesome. saying that. And I'm not saying that Tennessee is a bad. I think Tennessee is a very was with head and the Tennessee hooker, is a good team. A very good team. I'm just questioning, are they a top ten team? And after after losing that way, that badly to you know you have to admit Todd your team isn't exactly killing it this year. It's the way they lost, and how much they lost by. It makes you question: Is this a top ten team? That's all. That's my only point. It, I, I don't think they are. If that Can team, I, had, if that team had Michigan's schedule, it, meaning Tennessee, and then they had that performance, then I would say, yeah, I'm starting to question some things here. Mark, if the if if the 
seven of us played Michigan schedule, we'd we'd be like a bull eligible. I want to make one other statement, then I'll get out of your way because I don't want to dominate this conversation. I want you guys oh, to get back at it. Day. I will. No, we I, love I, having you. Stay, I will, stay. I will dump out, no, I will dump out of it because I want to hear you guys. <laughs> uh, people get to hear me enough. Uh, I will say this: for anybody that picks on rankings, just understand it's a difficult process to undertake because it's easy to look at the rankings that somebody else did and say, "Why are they 13 and not 16?" and did 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 and just isolate specifics there are 22 teams that are seven and four that's a lot right. just just try to rank those 22 teams is ridiculous because you and, can you and can many make of them don't have any data argument. points right and they don't have any like comparable data points to to point to and be like well this team i know we, we were talking about the transitive property but you don't even have that for a lot of these of these teams yeah, so they do in pockets yeah, but they're not sometimes. connected yeah right like NC State in Louisville and Florida State, that glut of ACC teams. You know, there's a pocket. You can try to get a read on them. And then there's another right. pocket out here in the Pac-12, and there's a pocket here and there. Yeah, Mark, can it's I leave it at this? Can yeah. I leave it at this? We have a team in the top 10 that has lost two games by multiple touchdowns. That's all I'm saying. I'll, I'm leaving it there simply. They have some good wins, right? I think the Alabama. I think Alabama is a great team. I think they are a really good team. I think they've lost two tough games on the road last minute. I think, as you pointed out, that that's that's the good Alabama team. I'm not sold on LSU. I'm not sold on Tennessee. That's all I'm saying. I think Georgia and Alabama are great teams. You know, Georgia and Alabama are awesome. And, and Todd, Todd, I'm sorry. You're you're we did, we didn't mean to offend you, but we're talking about a team that got slaughtered by Florida. Got beat by Missouri. Uh, Vanderbilt. Yeah, Vanderbilt. Like they lost to about. They, they beat, they beat they Vanderbilt. No, they didn't. They, they beat Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt. They beat Vanderbilt. Who was the Arkansas? Is the other one? It's just. They lost I mean, to Missouri, didn't they? They lost to Missouri. I guess, I guess we yeah, shouldn't say they're terrible, but they're definitely they're definitely not strong. Oh, I was talking about you know how South Carolina got beat by a Florida team that lost to Vanderbilt. So it's like uh, I'm. Not- I, I'm just here to remind everybody. Then, I mean, and, and and we hate to play the transit property too much because Utah lost to Florida, but it just that it's it's not. This is not about South Carolina. It's about the fact that South Carolina is not strong, and they had a phenomenal win where they destroyed Tennessee, and the the Tennessee worship is is getting tiresome. Um, after all, that. all USC has to do is beat Notre Dame. And win the Pac-12. Well, he's Pac-12. No, he's talking about South Carolina. He's not talking about Southern California. Wait, all, see, that's what I'm saying, Jack. You're saying all they have to do is beat Notre Dame. So they, they beat USC, and all you have to do is beat Notre Dame, and all you have to beat is Oregon, and then and then they'll be legit. I mean, you know, it's like they've the the, the way it gets a bit ridiculous on what the Pac-12 has to do in order to get there, and we're just going to yeah. ordain a questionable team that's lost two games by multiple touchdowns, regardless of who they lost to, and we want to say, hey, this is one of the top ten teams. That's my only argument. Do I know? I don't know. There's the data points aren't big enough. I'm just giving you my problem with the system. Yeah. Nobody really knows, right? We always get surprised every year. So uh, it's just those two losses. And again, this last loss, my goodness, that's not just an isolated incident. They, they, you, you can't go off to small, there's a few data points and say that, well, because they beat Alabama and, and because uh, um, they're in the SEC and they're a solid team, you know, because LSU is questionable, therefore they are a great team. I don't, I don't see it. Great teams don't get blown out like that. Exactly. I, I'm they not calling hardly any. I'm only going to call one great team at this. I, I don't even know if we've got a great team in the country. It all depends on what your definition of great is, but uh, right. I, I don't know that we've got a great team. I think we may have three. We may have one, and I may not go past three. At the most, I, I, and I begin like I've begun like thinking this like, and, and I kind of alluded to it earlier. I was like, man, having well, really, kind of like four straight like almost truly dominant like all time national champions has skewed people's you know expectations of what a a good team looks like and what you know in a in a given average year what the national champion should look like. I mean, you, you look, you had 2018 Clemson, 2019 LSU, 2020 Alabama, all went undefeated, all basically bulldozed their schedule. And then you have then 2021 Georgia, while they lost the game, 
they they were truly dominant pretty much the entire season and beat the team that beat them in the national championship. And, you know, they had a historic defense and all that. So, like, a lot of people have just kind of – I think it's been the worst thing for the sport for, you know, that kind of dominance to, you know, repeat itself and because it's kind of just, you know, shifted everybody's, um, you know, criteria expectations. and expectations. Yeah. So, I, I mean – we, we could have a – we need to kind of bring down our expectations of what elite or uh, great is because, you know, you don't get a 2019 LSU every year. That's not what the national championship looks like on, uh, in a given year. So, you know, that's kind of – 2004 weird. USC. Yeah. Well, I, I was I was talking about in recent years. I, I'm not I'm not just talking mm-hmm. about the greatest teams of all time in general. I'm just talking about in recent years in the college football playoff era – where you had three straight undefeated national champions and then a fourth that was that, you know, I mean, it wasn't undefeated, but was like dominant outside of one game. So it's just, it's a, it's kind of changed everybody's and, and kind of recalibrated everybody's mindset on how we evaluate teams and how we evaluate what uh, elite truly is. Oh, one more thing that I forgot to note is that, Tennessee is now the second team to start number one in the college football rankings and not make it to the playoffs. Anybody remember that first team? Mississippi, Mississippi State. Mississippi State, yeah. 2014, yep. None of the four teams made it from the initial rankings, right? Wasn't it Mississippi State, Ole Miss, Auburn, and – Oregon, no, Oregon Texas made them, Right? No, Tess A&M wasn't in there. Okay, it was those three and somebody else. Yeah. Yeah. AM had that little was, magical it was Florida September, State. but then quit in October for some it's reason. Probably Florida State. This would yeah. be the first time I'd number three made it, right? Because usually whoever's number three has never made it to the playoff. Who yeah. started well, as number three? Because Georgia's not started number three in the playoff poll, and they're probably gonna make it. Unless if they lose to Georgia Tech in the SEC championship game. Yeah. Yeah, here it is. Uh, Mississippi State, Florida State, Auburn, and Ole Miss were the top four in the first ever rankings of the CFP. And out of those three, they didn't make it. Only one. That was Florida State that year. Before we move on, can I just remind everybody that Notre Dame lost to Marshall and Stanford? Thank you. Marshall, Marshall, Marshall. I'm I'm sorry, D4. I didn't hear you. Can you just repeat that again? They, They lost to Marshall and Stanford. I hope I hope we get a Texas Notre Dame bowl game. Please, please, uh, <laughs> either Texas or LSU. If we can't get in a New Year's Six bowl, D four. I forget is that is that the team that is is one in sixteen or whatever in their last seventeen Pac twelve games? Yes. Okay, I just wasn't sure. That was the same Stanford or a different one. Gosh, I wanted you guys to lose to Kansas so bad, and you'd be here. <laughs> Gosh, darn it, Kansas! Why can't you play that? Yeah, Kansas. Full shame. Yeah, we we wanted Lance Leipold to win that one again, but I, but you know we'll get to it later on. But we suspect. Well, I suspect that he's distracted by something else. Well, hang, hang on for one second, Mark, because there's a third point. We got way off the rails, John. I know you're out there. Sorry, John. John does a great job for uh, setting the agenda. Unfortunately, he left the children in charge. So we've kind of gone off the rails, but he had a, he has a pretty good point here. He's talking about the benefits of playing cupcakes in week 11 versus real opponents. This is something that I don't, I've heard that some conferences do. Uh, they'll before their big rivalry game, they'll, they'll tee up the little sisters of the poor. Um, so I have my views on it, but I'd love to Mark, if you can go first, do you have any thoughts on, on this uh, strategy and, and how it's helpful? Well, it's a smart strategy. They just shouldn't be allowed to do it, but uh, they can do whatever they want because they're allowed to do whatever they want. So I'm guessing they do it for a few different reasons. One would be that they are preparing their teams for the postseason. So any way that they, they certainly can't get away with scheduling like, you know, a backloaded schedule of cream puffs so they can get away with one week like that. And it just helps keep, keep teams healthy for later on and of course they they do make sure that they're fair to their own teams and that anybody that plays a cream puff in week 11 plays against 
uh, another team that played a cream puff team. So like Auburn played a cream puff, Alabama played a cream puff, boom, they're playing next week. Yeah. I don't think that it should be part of college football. I just don't think it belongs in November football, but that's why we need a governing body to be in charge of scheduling. Like they and, should just they should just start instead of scheduling Austin P and stuff. They just start scheduling big ten West teams. Yeah, it might be an easier game <laughs> like they Sorry. used to. Remember when they played Wisconsin in the opener that one? Yeah, I'm gonna be in, in, in all in all honesty, and and you guys know that I, I'm no lover of some of the SEC strategies, but there's really no difference between playing your cream puff in week three and playing them in week eleven. True. Other than it gets kind of annoying to, to fans later. But as far as the team strategy goes, I mean, UCLA was in what their sixth game of the season before we had any idea if they were any good. Michigan was what five games into the season before we had any idea if they were any good because they played all of their ter- all of these terrible teams up front. So it doesn't really like academically, it doesn't matter. And I think Mark brings up a really good point that it does, it does give you uh, that week to heal. You know, as opposed to a bye week, you get you get a week for your guys to be better, your guys to heal. Late in the season, which is kind of have helpful. I think the big problem is nobody in FBS really should be playing those lousy FCS teams. Like yeah. it should be FBS, FBS. The Let's TV play. networks don't like it. The fans don't like it. And you know what? There's an argument that says, well, but it gives them money. Well, you know what? If you want to give them money, you can give them money. I have this a solution, right. Write a chat. I have a solution, Tony. What's that? Make the FBS versus FCS games a spring game. Yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah, I guys do that all, all the time. Lot. I think it's a great yeah. idea. Do like a spring scrimmage. Like, there's a lot of things you could do because there's there's really no reason for Alabama to be playing Austin P. There's just I not. Watch, honestly, I didn't even watch that game, Tony. That's why I was like watching TC Baylor. Michigan Nobody Oklahoma. wants to watch that game. It, it, Tony, it just it doesn't help anybody. Tony, one flaw in what you just said was is that a lot of teams only play three cupcakes, and the SEC plays three cupcakes at the beginning of the year. Yeah. Well, the then, SEC, they get, uh, then they get an additional cupcake. Because which they don't play nine good. conference games. Correct. Yes. So you have the eight conference game thing, yeah. which is huge. Because we all know that you can rest – forget resting up, guys. Guys could get injured. So it's not just the resting up part as well. It also keeps guys from getting injured that are on your team. You can send them out the second half or whatever. And, and that's that's the thing the SEC does that's very pansy and it results in their teams not playing each other. It it's also gives awkward. you an opportunity for guys going for awards to, to pad numbers. But the biggest thing I'm thinking about you guys didn't think about is it also allows your assistant coaches to get out there and recruit a little heavier that week leading up to the early signing day you have a little bit of a jump and more time to get in the ear of those guys where other guys are game planning for a conference game. You've got that extra week to do some extra recruiting because you're playing, you got Austin P coming up. I'm sure you have to go over that third or fourth play again to make sure they're not going to do that. They're, they're not even doing any of that. So there are huge advantages. I do think one thing that they do need to get set straight is, okay, conferences, are we playing eight or are we playing nine? And uh, you, yeah. you know, that's what should be done. That's the first thing. And that would sort all this out. So, so I will credit some teams in the SEC Eastern Division and some teams in the ACC, like Jordan's Clemson Tigers, that have the opportunity to play two cream puffs, whether they're two FCS teams or an FCS and a really low group of five team like an Alabama typically does. Because to Tony's point, in a sense, it's no different than, you know, it's just distrib- it, it's distributed in, this, in the schedule differently. It's, it's played later in the season, but... Because those two conferences, the ACC and the SEC, play eight conference games, they have an additional open spot to play another lousy opponent that they're going to trample, uh, except for um, teams like Georgia and Clemson. They go ahead and schedule an extra Power Five game. So Clemson's always playing South Carolina, and then they'll add a Notre Dame or somebody else at Georgia a few years ago uh, on the schedule. And so... Kentucky's the one exception to that. Start, sorry, Derail. You don't schedule yeah. anybody else besides Louisville, and that's the only decent opponent that you ever schedule non-conference, and you should be scheduling somebody else. Uh, Brett made a point. Uh, every conference should play nine, nine games. Mm-hmm. SEC, yes. Big Ten, yes. ACC, yes. Pac-12, no. I think everybody should. Why? Why? Why not? Well, they have for long. They have forever. 
Yeah. They've played nine games since the 70s. Yeah, well, I mean, Pac-12 needs to do another thing, switch to eight games. Why? Why? Why would that be? That way you can have more room to have a tougher non-conference game and a better strength of schedule. That way, if you beat, you know, your tough non-con opponents and your good conference opponents, then you Jackson, win. We have, Jackson, hold on. We have six teams in the top 25. Why do we need more? Might help. It'll help you. I don't know that no. I agree. Yeah. I mean, I they, they, play nine, they play nine games. So the, the in fact one of their things, which was very much part of the conference's tradition, is that they had ten teams and they played a round robin of nine games. Yeah, they've always played nine games. But since then, the, since we've gone to conference championship games, the money grab. If you had a 10, te- 10 team nine, you know nine conference game round robin, we know who the champion is. Unfortunately, they've gone away from that. Yeah. Well, I mean, once the Big Twelve gets to twelve teams, you know, just. Switch back over to eight. Well, the majority of teams in the Pac-12 do play one very significant opponent, and the Oregon States and Washington States of the world typically don't schedule anyone and maybe play a Houston or a Boise State, but the rest of the conference is playing Notre Dame, is playing Minnesota like Colorado did this year, is playing Georgia, is playing Michigan State. And blank. Yes, Michigan State and Wisconsin and Utah, or uh, Florida. So. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think it's, that's an issue. I, I think the Pac-12 goes out and schedules, you know, non-conference pretty, you know, they, they pretty aggressively. They pretty yeah. 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 Almost yeah. on their own detriment. Really <laughs> Some of these Ohio Sometimes, State yeah. games that people go after when they probably well, shouldn't and they, be. And they also do a thing, which is that they they will take on the schools like Boise and Fresno, who are good enough to beat you. Oh yeah. Which, like, I mean, I one of the things that I give the SEC some of the SEC schools credit for is they're. I actually think this is kind of smart, right? Like, no school in the SEC would schedule uh, some somebody that is like local to them, whose players feel rejected by them, and who they have nothing to win by. Memphis. Uh, I was thinking more like like Alabama. Like talks Nick Saban talks about like he's not going to play Troy or Stanford. Okay, because he's like there, he said there's it was a and I don't at least UAB. Say yeah, like imagine like Alabama versus UAB. UAB might beat them sometime, not often, but sometimes there'd be like nothing to win from that. Yeah, I was actually I was actually at the two of the Michigan State uh, Central Michigan games in the '90s when <laughs> Central Michigan won them both. And I don't know if you guys remember that was, it was Mark Mark probably remembers it was like stunning. And it was the same thing. There was you know nothing for Michigan State to gain, and they just looked terrible. But. Oh, here we go. Um, LSU will play A1 USC LSU 2024 kickoff classic in Las Vegas. James Wade. I'll yep. have to be yeah. fight on for that game. I'll I'll painfully have to be fight on. For sure. well, but see, that's what he's, he's not wrong. LSU has has lined up some pretty nice uh, non conference. You know they oh, put uh, UCLA on that same con docket. Yeah, LSU went to Arizona State. Like, because LSU and Georgia both used to play very, very weak non conference schedules. And kudos to LSU and Georgia, who for the last decade have just been on a warpath of going around the country and playing all kinds of teams. And I always remember Tennessee also being that team. I mean, they were playing, they come out and play UCLA. Yep. Oregon. Tennessee used to play Notre Dame a lot. Yeah. Yeah. So there are exceptions. Yeah. Brady yeah, you just, you just have to go back to the 90s to, to find when the SEC would travel. Yeah, Tennessee went to Oregon about 15 years ago. They went to uh, Notre Dame back in the 90s. <clears throat> yeah, and, but, I mean, there, there's teams, again, like USC, they play. So we play um, Notre Dame every year. But yeah. we'll also go out, we'll travel to play teams. Like we have LSU, and then we also we're playing Ole Miss. So that's not just one. I mean, we have that on top of playing uh, Notre Dame every single year. So there are some teams that actually go out there and are getting those non-conference games. So and then you got I, a team. No, it's really no excuse for teams not to do it. You yeah. got a team like Florida that that hasn't left the state of Florida for a non-conference game since the nineties, and the last time they did, they got beat. So they won't just, even have Miami to their yearly. Yeah, the difference though with Florida is they do play Florida State, Miami a lot. Like I give them credit for that. 
they, well, they, they play Florida play State Miami. every year, but they really don't schedule Miami that often. And they've kind of the, – the two teams have – I mean, they played a few years ago, but, like, uh, those – they don't really – it's not really – there's not really, like, a push or – they're not really in a hurry to schedule each other. Um, they and, need to be. I mean, yeah, you have Florida State – yeah, you have your in-state rival with Florida State, but you – you I mean, you still have room to go – I mean, you still have room to go and play another one. I mean – are you more like Florida? I mean, Clemson huh? has South Carolina every year, but they don't just settle for South Carolina. It's like, oh, that's going to be our, our, that's going to be our one big game. You, know you guys, I mean? hold on. We have we have a Michigan fan that wants to complain about scheduling. Okay, oh, go. Don't do that. <laughs> Can I make some popcorn while we talk about Michigan schedule? <laughs> what about that Michigan UCLA game I was going to go to? Was that? Oh, oh yeah, they 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 whisked out of that one. Yeah, whatever happened to that game again? Oh, right. They, yeah, oh, that's right. They, what they happened to that out. game? John, hey, Why? John, you see what happens? You give us the keys to the car? Do you see where it goes? Do you see? Sorry, John. I wanted to go to that game. We're like we're like the children throwing the party while the parents out of the house. Even the baby. Of course, that game got the ultimate party. prank because Michigan canceled that game, and now it's a conference game. Okay, so so let's move on. Let's go to let's right. go to um, John's fourth point here, and that's talking about the the coaching talk. So there's some head coaches this time of year. I would argue more traditionally that would have been this time of year, but now it's almost you're too late now if you ask me about the coaching carousel. But um, there's there's some guys up there that are on pretty hot seats right now. So I was asked the panel, who do you think's the hot? You know, who's on the hottest seat, right? And um, when do you think the heads are gonna roll? Oh man. Okay. So you wow. Okay. We have a whole Pat graphic. Fitzger- nice. um, oh, Pat Fitzgerald is loved. So this is coacheshotseat.com. Uh this is not my graphic. This is this is someone else's work. Um, um I'll even I drop it in the chat for you guys. I wouldn't I know the site so existed. Quick to put Brent Venables on the hots because it's just his first year. But if it was like a year three, I can understand him being on the hot seat. But uh, yeah, Brent Venables is not on the hot seat. Yeah, this this is well, not the voice of college. This is not the opinion of voice of college football. This is a website. I just threw this up here just for some faces and some names. And yep. no, Brent Venables is nowhere near the hot seat. Dana Holgerson. Unfortunately, I could see him being on the hot seat because if you if you guys remember, after Major Applewhite got fired. Thank you, Les, for that. By the way. The, the Houston president said eight wins is not good enough. Eight and four will get you fired. That's not how it should be, but unfortunately, that's the reality at Houston. If you go eight and four, you're canned. This website's pretty terrible. Well, I mean, yeah. add to the fact where everybody expected Houston to dominate the American Athletic Conference and go basically unbeaten. You know, that's not going to – that's left there a bad taste in everybody's mouth at Houston, especially allowing 77 points against SMU. So, hold on. I'm, I'm trying to make sense of, like, the, the placement. Yeah, I don't get this at all. Yeah, you guys, don't try, don't try to make too much sense of this website. Of the numbers or where they are. This is just, yeah. to, throw, just to give your idea. This like, for instance, they got, Jed, they got Jed Fish here at 10. That yeah, guy is no, no, near no. getting fired. So Jed, Fish, Jed Fish is closer to statue than yeah, fired. Right, than getting <laughs> fired yeah. after what he walked into. Right? Nope. And we know Venables is ridiculous. Shaw's leaving what he wants to leave. They could get a they could get a frying pan or anything. He's still staying. He's not going until he wants to leave. So Neil Brown, he, 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 he might step down. Bit. That said, Neil Brown, I think makes a little bit of sense. But I, but I know that Joey Foster uh, has his um, suspicions that he thinks uh, Brown's going to return for twenty twenty three. And there's also the fact that West Virginia doesn't have their athletic direct their new athletic director right now. Yeah, I don't think this list says that they're getting fired. I'm saying these people are getting some heat is all I think that it's right. saying. Well, Brown's in some big, big heat, especially with the third losing season in four years at West Virginia. Well, Mark, I'd ask you, what are the odds of a, of a like a lifelong Notre Dame dude and Pat Fitzgerald getting fired from there? What, what, do, you, what do you think about that? that? That is a tremendous question because – 
I produced a top 10 list of hot seat guys and the, the top three got picked off, you know, Harson and Frost and, and uh, Jeff Collins at Georgia tech. So I think I'm down to Neil Brown was my fourth guy, I believe. Uh, the, Pat Fitzgerald, he's beloved there. He's an all time great there. He's done things at Northwestern that we haven't seen since Eric Parsegan back in the late fifties, early sixties, but he's on a, he's on a brutal stretch, right? He, you know, three and nine, then in the COVID year, they win the division, go six and two, seven and two with a bowl win, but three and nine, three and nine, they're one in 10 right now. They are just, um, his recruiting has actually been better the last couple of recruiting cycles and they just uh, put up some amazing facilities. So uh, the non-football part of the program seems to be doing much better, but uh, the, the roster's in shambles. It's awful. But at some point, they're going to say enough's enough. Now, if Scott Frost was given five years at Nebraska and they expect to win, I got to think Pat Fitzgerald still got quite a bit of rope at Northwestern, I would think. I would think it's up to the up to the uh, Ryan family as well. Yeah, I mean, the new president Shell is not making that move unless the Ryan family wants it, mm. and the Ryan family loves Pat Fitzgerald. In three years, Marcus Freeman will be there. <laughs> you, you. <laughs> oh my. Well, I, mean, I, mean, I, hope, I hope for your sake that Steve Sark stays there as long as he wants with those seven five years. <laughs> seven five after seven five. However, yeah. I can can we all guys, can we all SEC, Big Ten, Pac 12, can we all unite and agree that Brian Ferentz has to go? Oh yeah, totally. Yeah. Yes. Erica, thank you for that super chat. We really appreciate it. And, yeah, and Erica, I'll we look. We love having you in the channel and in the chat all the time. Yeah, like, go you on, are, Erica. You, Erica, you've hit a home run on this one. Yeah. All right, so moving on. Let's go to the next. So so finally, uh, playoff talk. So oh, okay. um, We didn't get to talk about the Auburn job, Carazzle. Well, would you like to just share with that? Go ahead. Uh, sure, you know, and where Hugh Freeze is going and, you know, who's switching jobs and – you know, let's see, Stoop signs and renewal and how much is beating Saban winning title race. Um, you know, the Auburn job, you know, I think it's down to three guys. Especially if Auburn beats Bama next set, which I don't see happening, but if it happens. Um, Hugh Freeze, Deion Sanders, and Cadillac Williams. Now, anybody that's watched Cadillac Williams over the last few weeks, he has brought a lot of energy at Auburn. The fans love him. The players love him. Everybody loves him. But when they had Brian Harson, they were not too happy. They didn't want to they, – they wanted to just get through the day. They, they played as if they wanted to. They weren't very good, but with Cadillac Williams, they're very happy to be there. They want to. They want to win for him. And you know, if Auburn does the impossible and upset Bama in Tuscaloosa for the first time since 2010, the Cam Newton year, does that automatically make Cadillac Williams a finalist? Why or why not? I think sometimes interim coaches receive the same type of hype from fan bases as backup quarterbacks. Uh, yeah. I'm not saying that Cadillac Williams will not be a great head coach someday. And maybe that day is tomorrow and beyond, you know, the ensuing years here at Auburn, but just because he brings a lot of hype, I think people are looking for, you know, they were looking to get rid of Brian Harson. They're looking for a new beginning they're looking for hope they're looking for change and he represents all those things but that doesn't mean he's a, he's able to handle a top 15 program in the country and also he's a legend there so true. people automatically love him that doesn't mean he's a great head coach true i i agree with that mark um 
And where is he freeze going? Because, like, yesterday they lost to Virginia Tech 23-22. Is he freeze distracted? Is he going to go to Auburn, West Virginia? Is he going to go anywhere like Nebraska, Wisconsin? Uh, I don't. I don't see him going to any any important flagship or uh, public institution or values based institution that uh, get he given his off field behavior, particularly his uh, harassment of students involved in sexual assault litigation against the university. It would be very, very, very surprising. I think to see a institution that values. Uh, like its own students, quite honestly, uh, and it has and whose risk management teams and endowment risk teams and litigation teams would sign off on that. And I know that that's going to inspire people in the chat to go. Rah, 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 rah. But like, in all honesty, guys, like the, it, he is a huge he is a huge risk to your school as far as litigation goes. And I don't think that an athletic director wants to put themselves on the line to to hire that. But I guess we'll see. I was gonna say, Tony. I mean, we are talking about college football, and not. I mean, a school like Auburn, Stanford. a school like Auburn right. might, but a school like West Virginia, for example, is not. A school like West Virginia, which is run by a, a legendary character of college football, or of, of of the sporting and academia world, uh, President G, G uh, from Ohio State previously, is not putting West Virginia's name on the line to hire Hugh Freeze. Uh, and I mean, Bobby Petrino is pretty similar, you know, as far as like the quality, the, the commitment and ethics of the institution. Uh, most most of these are, are outstanding, amazing, amazing institutions led by really awesome academic leaders. And they're just not going to put their own litigation risk on that mm -hmm. to engage that guy and hire that guy to run their team. And, and a lot of them also like these schools are really big on leadership development. And they don't believe that somebody like that is teaching the leadership skills that they want for their team. They believe that Hugh Freeze exhibits terrible leadership of his program, even if he wins games, and they don't want that for their team. But I mean, Bobby Petrino is the same way, and it's why those guys don't have bigger jobs. And now you can all you can all hate me, but I'm just I'm trying to like no, get you guys to understand why. It does make a lot of sense, but I, I know John's looking at his, his agenda and knowing we're going off it again. So we're going back right. to the agenda. And uh, the last one we have on the agenda is the playoff talk, polls and lists. We, well, we won't find out the playoff until Tuesday, but I wanted to show you guys the best list that there is, right, without that. And that's not this thing. It's Mark Rogers' top 10. So another pretender. I know. Look at that. <laughs> on the LSU's we, too we've high. got the man himself here. And so I thought we're, we're going to look at a real list and uh, and go through this list. So we've already discussed Tennessee. We're taking Tennessee up. We're not doing Tennessee. That they're they're completely off the topic. But uh, I would like to ask everybody. Well, I, can I ask you this, Mark? On this list, which was the one you were most unsure about? Which one on your top ten gave you like a little bit of pause on where you were going to place them? Clemson, USC. I went back and forth on that. USC has a much better loss than Clemson by far. USC has the best win between the two teams in just defeating UCLA. However, Clemson's got a stack of credible wins. So I, I begrudgingly kept them in front of USC. And Mark, that didn't bother me because the thing that you do with your ranking that like the AP voters don't do by and large is that you relook at it. Like USC's got, they have two huge games ahead. And those may add, those will probably add if they win them, if if they win them, that's an if, who knows, we'll see. Those would add to their win teams, which would push their resume up above. Oh, I mean, absolutely. Clemson Clemson, Clemson got boat raced by Notre Dame. So if USC beats Notre Dame, there's, in your rankings, there's pretty much no way that USC would stay behind Clemson, was there? Yeah, yeah you don't claim your spot and then you keep your spot just if you keep winning, right. even if there's a team behind you that just, just had three incredible wins. Yeah. Like it's like in the AP. <laughs> this is why we like Mark's ranking. And and this is why, guys, anybody who watches Mark's ranking show, you know, don't be upset because the thing about Mark's ranking is that it can change. Unlike the AP, where they put that like 
thing and they try to pour concrete around it and make up excuses as to why not to move them. And Here's unlike his move. And unlike tonight's show, tomorrow night. Mark's going to have a show that if you have an issue with any of these, if you are all angry in the chat right now about one particular team over another, you absolutely have the opportunity to look really stupid. Are you with Mark tomorrow? Believe me, I know I've done it a couple of times. So feel free. <laughs> give it a shot to get the schoolmaster to chide you. You can go for it. I've tried it a couple of times. It didn't work out. But I, 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 I really suggest all of you if you have an issue instead of being a keyboard warrior and being all tough guy in the comments why don't you man up and uh call mark and explain to him why uh you disagree with his uh, with his rent oh hey mike who's asking who's angry just look in the comments oh my word <laughs> the yeah. comments are so fun mark every i love week, the comments every week i just i just go and scan them i don't even like reply to any of them i just just to see the people that that we and people that just don't understand the ranking or and, and don't understand the criteria and uh they just they sometimes they don't even have the sound on they just scroll to see the list and then they just go in the comments i, I know they do and, and just you know type you know paragraphs of uh, uh you know attacking mark and mark, mark, not actually saying anything meaningful mark i think you have a caller who would like to call tomorrow and spend about a half hour polishing a turd <laughs> well, I think we all yeah, agree that there are pockets. Who shouted? Who that might be? Hmm. Is, there, is there a caller that might want to polish a, a bright orange turd tomorrow? I bet there is. Oh lord! We're just kidding. We love you. I will. I will tell you this. We know in our community and and, and on sports in general that uh, there are pockets of sports fans that aren't exactly Phi Beta Kappa. So uh, there's going to be some really poor arguments, and there may be some good ones. But uh, again, I, I encourage anyone. You think you're up to the task to give Mark a shot because um, I'll be listening and laughing my ass off. So feel free. <laughs> well, thanks. For hey, Mark, it's the real MVP. Hey, you guys take us home and I'll get out of your way. You guys are amazing. Thanks for doing this. Every hey, we love you, Mark. We hey, love by, you, the way, Mark. by the way, great rankings. I did love, I love these. I used them, a lot of them to inspire my own rankings when we had a tournament this week, which right, you guys can also do. I'll have to look at your rankings before I go to bed. And then uh, go, we'll have to talk about it a little more later on. Give me a call. Anytime, man. Absolutely, man. And I'm not being mean, but uh, B. Weinman, um, if you don't know Phi Beta Kappa, uh, then maybe you might be one of the members of the people that I'm talking about. So, But um, <laughs> so with that, I want to take a few minutes that we can all just sit back and uh, have a minute to talk about our team really quickly. It's fun maybe. and sassy tonight, guys. I love it. Maybe feel free to um, go ahead and uh, uh, talk about anything you might have going on and any final thoughts. Uh, we'll start with uh, Jackson. Go ahead. <laughs> Me? Well, well, I just wish Alabama would not played the cupcake games week before rivalry week. But, you know, if you got to play against Austin Pay, make that game a spring game. And uh, if you want to find me, uh, find me on Twitter, Instagram, and on YouTube. You won't regret it. Awesome, Jackson. Thanks so much for being here. Appreciate it. Oh, I appreciate it. Thank you for having me on. Okay. Brandon? Yes, sir. Uh, you can find me at D4 Sports uh, like it is on the screen there. Uh, I produce content, college football content as well. Um I cover a few teams uh, here and there. I've been slacking off a little bit. Uh, high school football season just wrapped up in my neck of the woods. So I'll have a lot more time on my hands now. Uh, but uh, appreciate uh, being on here. I, honestly, I will be a Notre Dame fan this week uh, just for Roger Dodger in the comments section. I don't believe it. I hope, <laughs> I, I hope SC crashes and burns. <laughs> <laughs> what did you guys ever do to can, you can we time? get a, can we get a go irish can we get a go irish out of here uh, uh, go willis team i love marcus freeman i love marcus freeman we'll see uh drew pine for I, heisman I, do what <laughs> drew pine for heisman brandon you calling it maybe isaiah foskey maybe that's fair. Yeah, that's fair. Exactly. That's actually really fair. That's actually really fair. fair. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Brandon, for being here. Appreciate it so much. Yes, sir. Will. 
You can find me at Will ND on YouTube. Um, I know I'm going to come up with that clip to vlog soon. School's been kicking my butt. And yeah, Relatable. I do a show with Jackson and Jeffrey, who's on here as well, the Young Guns. And we like to have guests on. We had Buck Guy and Mike on last time. That was fun. I really would love to have Daryl on sometime soon. That would be fun. And maybe Jordan. I know Jordan, you can do D Force jokes. I don't want to step on anyone's toes, but. No, yeah, I'd absolutely just, yeah. be, I'd love to be and on the show. Check out our show, The Young Guns. It, yeah, it we have we have a fun time over together. there picking the two games and uh and yeah, right. picking rivalry week's gonna be a ton of fun. So yeah, hey, let's hit let's hit the breaks and back end really quick. You guys sorry, sorry, Brandon. Um Cole, appreciate the super chat. Luke Fickle at Nebraska. Thoughts. I don't think he takes it. I think it'd be a, 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 a slam dunk if they did it. I he's thought, a Midwest guy. That's a Midwest job, but I think he's waiting for um, – sorry, plug yours, Buckeyes. Ryan Day leaving, going to the NFL because he would love that job. I'm not sure I'm not sure if that's still – he's the hot list guy that he used to be, but I think he's a great coach. He'd be a great uh, uh, fit anywhere. Yeah, I don't, I don't know how much – how likely it is it happens, but I, I don't have any insider knowledge about and I haven't really kept up with that search, so I don't know who – who they're actually like interviewing and talking to, but man, I, I mean, from an outsider view, I, I think that would be a, a fantastic hire uh, for Nebraska. Um, I, I'd, I'd like it a lot. Agreed. If he, if he can sort out, if he can get a couple of good recruiters and start the recruiting with him as head coach, uh, that defense, everything would come back to the, the black shirts. You know what I mean? I think that would be, I think that could get really nasty really quick. That would be a good idea. Question is, how do you sell them on it? Yeah. Okay, sorry, Brandon, I cut you off. Oh, you're good. I just wanted to tell everybody, uh, definitely go check out the Young Gun, even though they're ageist. And um, <laughs> me, me, Tim, and Tony aren't invited ever yeah. due to our age. So, uh, But go check them out. They're uh, you know some knowledgeable kids when it comes to uh, very. college football. And uh, I like them very much, even though I give Will uh, crap about his team. It's all just a joke. But Yeah, just, it's all fun. It's all yeah, fun. but they still lost to Marshall and Stanford, so you're terrible. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> And they have a good – so it's, if you guys probably also know Jeffrey. Uh, so you have Jeffrey, Will, and Jackson. These guys are – forget their age. These guys know more than the, your average centenarian out there. He's just, they're, they're just going to crank it out because they, they don't just talk about modern day. But these guys, some of the stuff they bring up, I'm like, how the hell do you know about that game in the 1970s? And these kids will whip it out. So you definitely got to check them out. Oh, and today is the 40th anniversary of the play from 82 Cal Stanford. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. All right, Will, anything else? Uh, go Irish. Uh, we're going to be doing stuff with Tony and Tim this whole week. We're going to be at the, on the Pac-12 show. It's going to be a ton of fun talking about the game. Civil War as well, so definitely check out that show. On well, we can't let you go without a score prediction. Are you waiting for Wednesday? Uh, I'll t I haven't thought about it yet, so Wednesday, Wednesday. Okay. All right, Jordan. Yeah, uh, you guys can uh, find me on Twitter at uh, Jobo0209. Uh, go check out uh, the Clemson Voice of College Football channel. Um, I do the pregame and, and postgame shows over there. So uh, yeah, make sure to give those, that channel a, a sub and um, you know like a video. Or, or even if you don't stick around, we're, we're trying to build this uh, this the the Voice of College Football uh, network. So, you know, getting more subscribers on those channels uh, will be huge. Get get on those team channels really helps. Um, I do a lot of stuff with uh, with Brandon uh, over on D4 Sports. So check that content out as well. Um, uh, other than that, uh, thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, for me, it's uh, it's Gamecock hate week. So the, the Gamecock slander will be uh, just supported. It'll, yeah, it, it, it. Yeah, very, very. Um, it's going to be a blast. I know we had a couple, and uh, I know we have one game. Yeah, Todd, I think he's a Gamecock fan. Uh, I can't wait, sir. Yeah, we are not Tennessee. That's all. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah, all uh, year, my I've been, time of the year. I've been Team DJ. You know that all year long. I think he's had some ups and downs, but I think he's putting it together. And uh, I, I think I think you guys are going to show out. So, I mean, all in all, DJ. I mean, if you look at his stats, I mean, he's he's played fine. It's just you know he, he's very capable of traveling on you and that's just kind of what you hope doesn't happen uh but yep th this is my favorite week of the year always i don't care how good clemson is i don't care how how bad south carolina is or vice versa uh you know 
if you've lived, if you spent any time in, in the state of South Carolina, this game means something every year, no matter who's good or who's bad. Uh, so th this is my, I, I love rivalry week. I love the trash talk. I, I love just watching the game. So I'm, I'm really excited for this weekend in general. Coming for you, man. And listen, by the way, so how about you? Let's, 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 I want your complete unbiased and objective. I know you will <laughs> opinion of what's the score going to be in that game before that chicken gets you. I hope that's not a game talk. Uh, you, you, you're going to make me give a score. Okay, uh, well, I'm gonna call my shot. I think Clemson rolls. I'm going Clemson 35, uh, South Carolina 10. I really I think that performance. You're gonna keep the I, I really 52 don't. under what Tennessee was able to do. Wow, that's that's audacious. I, I, I real I really do. I, I think it. I think it's a bad matchup for South Carolina. It was last year. They didn't even score a point last year. Um, I, I don't think their offensive line is very good. I think Clemson's defensive line, their front seven in general is going to eat. Uh, I think they're just much more capable on defense and won't have the lapses that Tennessee did. And I think Clemson will do just enough offensively uh, with their run game and, and uh, DJ, you know, yeah. taking care of the football uh, for Clemson to, to put up a, a decent offensive. Night. I, I think Clemson wins 35 to 10. Calling my shot. It, I, I can't wait for this to not age well. And I have to answer for my crimes next week. No, I think Jordan, you're what safe. do you think of the Clemson fans cheering South Carolina because Tennessee winning? Helps. Oh, it, oh, it, it disgusted okay. me. Well, it, it well, okay. So I kind of understood at you know when it was happening and when it was like clear that South Carolina was going to win, and they just they were cheering for South Carolina to just run it up on them. I, I kind of got that, but there was there were Clemson fans that were rooting for South Carolina before the game ever, you know. Uh, before the game ever started. And I was like, oh, come on, man. I, they, don't, they don't give us that energy back. Like, they don't root for they don't root for Clemson when they're playing, um, you know, a, a, another rival or, or some, one of their rivals or something. So, like, I don't, I don't give that same energy back. I, I, I hope South Carolina loses every game. But, hey, uh, you know, they, they got the win, one of the biggest wins in school history. So, uh there's nothing better than uh, ruining the hopes of, of Gamecock fans, especially when they're uh, riding off of a high. So can't wait for that. It's the best time to, to snatch your your uh, rival's soul is right off of flying yes. high. And I, I want to be this, very clear. It'll be one of the more satisfying there. wins. We've been joking around, but that was an amazing win. And, I, and what we said about Tennessee has nothing to do with that. Tennessee is a great team. I'm just questioning the top ten. A great win. Tony. Uh, I'm excited because this weekend, USC Notre Dame. So, this two, uh, Notre Dame was the other school that I almost went to. So, I, you know, I love when USC and Notre Dame play. It's especially fun. It's going to be a, a great game in the Coliseum, the whole country watching. Uh, hope we win, but you know, I mean, Notre Dame is a strong team. So, we'll see. It's going to be, uh, it's going to be real interesting. So, USC's spot song is better. Fight on. I agree with that. All three uh, of them. You, you want to break down the shows, Tony? Yeah, so we've got this week a couple of cool things. We've got uh, the Pac-12 chat show is going to be Wednesday night at 10.30. We're going to have some, a bunch of really cool stuff for that, uh, including the reveal of the, the uh, well, almost all the rest of the uh, special craft beers that LBC has found for all of the, sp the teams that had big wins this week. So you're going to get to see USC's beer, and it is a good one. So craft beer fans, definitely check out the Pac-12 chat show. Uh, Will's going to be with us as well to help preview the Notre Dame game and uh, help fill in for TBM, who is with the uh, Alpacas in Patagonia right now. Um, some of you probably don't even know where that is, which is fine. Um, most of us don't. Uh, no, it's a really fun trip for him. But he's, he's unfortunately not going to be with us. And then on Saturday night, right after the USC Notre Dame game, this is going to be really fun. We're doing a joint uh, chat, uh, post game show here on this channel. Uh, live on both the Notre Dame and USC channels, joint USC Notre Dame show. So that'll be a lot of fun. They call this game the Glamour Game, and there's a, a great book about it called The Glamour Game. So uh, it's going to be uh, hopefully be all it has lived up to through history. I, I definitely have to get you and my dad together because you're both Trojans. You're both from Michigan. You both decide between USC and Notre Dame and chose correctly, and you both have MBAs. So that would be a heck of a conversation. So, I like um, it. I'm, I'm glad. Again, thank he you guys. He's awesome already. 
next week we'll be back to normal. We're gonna bring we're gonna uh John and Ben will be back, I assume. I, I assume they will be. Uh it's gonna be a great week next week with all the rivalry games. It's it's the best week in football that there is. Really excited. Thank you all for being here. Uh sorry if we didn't get to your questions, but remember the best way to get those questions is, is through super chat. Feel free to give super chats next week to John. Uh, Mark always appreciates it. Also, remember the Patreon. What are you guys doing? It's five dollars a month. You get Discord. Uh, we chat all the time. We have we have game. We, you watch right now. We're, we'd have a live game going on usually, and uh, we're all talking about. We get ten people in there at a time. So feel free again to join Mark's Patreon page. Five dollars a month, and It'll we appreciate all of you. Five dollars you ever spent. To my knowledge, I haven't known anybody that actually got the five dollar Patreon and has left. That I've been. I've been there months and months and months. And once you're in, you are hooked. So appreciate all of you guys stopping by, taking time out of your Sunday to say hi to us. Remember, everything will go back to normal. The parents, our parents will be home next Sunday. So we'll go back to normal, probably a little more A-team if you want to see it. And uh, we'll see you all next week. Later, right on. Y'all.